All right, so let's get into this deep dive. It's all about, you know, the future of programming jobs. And I think if you're listening to this, you're probably, you know, interested in what all this AI buzz means for your career. And we're here to kind of help unpack some of that. And you pointed us towards this guy, Pedro Passos, mm-hmm. who has this pretty popular YouTube channel. And he's making some pretty bold predictions about what's going to happen in 2025. Yeah. You know, I think Pedro's really tapped into something with his channel. It yeah. really speaks to how programmers these days are kind of increasingly building their careers, not just, you know, through traditional means, but by sharing their knowledge, connecting with each other online, you know, building their personal brand. Yeah, you're right. And it's almost like he's living his own predictions in a way, like he's out there doing it. So he jumps right into this idea that, you know, everyone's saying, oh, the programming market is saturated. Right. But he disagrees. And this is where I got really curious. He says, employers are seeing all these like empty resumes and abandoned GitHubs. Hmm. So basically people who are listing skills, but then they have no actual projects to back it up. Right. What does that tell you? Yeah. I mean, to me, it signals a gap between what a lot of applicants are presenting and what employers actually need, right? A well-maintained GitHub, a portfolio of real projects. That's what catches the eye. For sure. It shows you can apply your skills, that you can think critically, and that you're genuinely passionate about coding. Yeah. It's like the difference between saying you can bake a cake and then actually like having a delicious cake to show for it. Exactly. And, you know, this becomes even more important when we consider Pedro's predictions about AI's impact. You know, he thinks that AI will start taking over a lot of those, you know, really basic repetitive coding tasks by 2025, which makes things a lot more competitive for those entry level developers. Yeah, for sure. So if someone's listening who's just, you know, starting out learning to code, mm-hmm. should they even bother? I mean, is junior developer kind of a dead end title before they even begin. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that, but it does mean the bar for entry level is getting higher. You know, if AI can spit out simple code snippets and catch basic errors, what really sets a human programmer apart, it's about being able to understand complex systems, solve problems creatively, write code that's, you know, elegant and efficient. Yeah, so Pedro talks a lot about the importance of creativity and critical thinking in a world with AI. And it's interesting because, you know, you don't often see those skills listed on a resume under programming languages. Right. So how can someone actually showcase that kind of thinking? That's the challenge. And I think Pedro has some interesting ideas about this. You know, he emphasizes the need to kind of move beyond just asking, you know, what the code should do and start asking how and why. Oh, interesting. You know, think about contributing to open source projects, coming up with, you know, unique applications, even writing blog posts that explain complex concepts. Clearly, these are all ways to demonstrate that deeper understanding. So it's about showing you can think beyond just the code itself. Yeah. Right. You understand the bigger picture. Yeah the user experience, maybe even the ethical implications. It's almost like being a programmer philosopher. That's a great analogy. Yeah, it's about bringing that holistic perspective to your work and showing that you're not just a code monkey, but, you know, a problem solver with a mind for innovation. And, Mm -hmm. you know, this ties directly into another key point that Pedro makes, which is the increasing importance of soft skills and networking. Okay, this is where I'm really interested to hear your take. So he says these things are more important than ever because the sheer volume of applicants out there, Mm -hmm. but it's such a broad term. Mm -hmm. What are some concrete examples of how someone can network effectively in the programming world? You know, it's about building genuine connections, not just collecting LinkedIn contacts, Mm -hmm. you know, attending industry events, participating in online forums, contributing to open source projects. These are all great ways to get involved. And, you know, don't underestimate the power of platforms like YouTube, just like Pedro is doing. You know, share your knowledge, engage in discussions, showcase your passion. And he specifically calls out what he calls the LinkedIn mirage. Right. Basically sending out hundreds of applications online and just kind of hoping for the best. Yeah. So why is a personal connection so valuable in this field? Well, you know, think about it from the employer's perspective. Would you rather hire someone who a trusted colleague recommended to you or someone who just kind of sent a generic resume through the system? Totally. You know, personal connections cut through the noise. They provide context and they build trust. It's human nature. Yeah. So it's about standing out from the crowd, showing that you're not just another face in the digital sea of applicants. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting how all these points kind of tie back to this idea of future proofing your career in a world where AI is changing the game. Mm -hmm. But what about the more tangible aspects of the job market? Like, What is Pedro seeing in terms of things like salaries and remote work? 
Yeah, so he sees U.S. salaries kind of stabilizing after that crazy spike we saw during the pandemic. And he's actually predicting that remote work, especially in those big tech companies, might start to decline. You know, he specifically mentioned Amazon's return to office policy as an example of this trend. Hmm. So what would you say the takeaway is for someone listening who's kind of thinking about all these factors? Well, I think it highlights the importance of flexibility and adaptability. Yeah. You know, the tech world is constantly shifting. So being open to different work environments, embracing new technologies and continually learning new skills is going to be crucial to staying ahead of the curve. That's a good point. It's not about chasing the hottest trend of the moment. It's about you know, developing that core set of skills that can adapt to whatever comes next. Exactly. And speaking of adapting, Pedro has some potentially concerning predictions about layoffs and offshoring that we need to kind of unpack. Yeah, this is where things get a little unsettling. So he thinks that layoffs will continue, especially impacting those with only basic skills. And he sees companies increasingly hiring programmers in countries where labor costs are lower, like India. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a tough reality to face. It is, but instead of getting discouraged, let's use this as motivation to understand how programmers can future-proof their careers in this you know, evolving landscape. We'll dive deeper into that very question in part two of our deep dive. Welcome back. So before the break, we were talking about these kind of concerning predictions about layoffs and offshoring. And it's easy to feel overwhelmed by these trends, but I think it's also important to remember that they also create opportunities. Yeah, that's a good point. It's about looking for those silver linings, right? So for programmers out there who are like, okay, I want to future-proof myself, where should they focus their energy? Well, I think specialization is key. You know, remember those niche fields we touched on earlier, things like cybersecurity, cloud computing, AI development. These areas are only going to grow. Yeah. You know, companies need experts who can solve very specific, complex problems. So it's about going deep rather than wide you know, becoming that go-to person for a particular skill set. Exactly. And the more specialized you are, the less likely you are to be impacted by things like offshoring. Because if a company needs, you know, very specific expertise, they're going to seek out the best regardless of location. Pedro also talked about, you know, senior engineers being in high demand. But what does it actually take to reach that level? Is it just about years of experience or is there something more to it? It's definitely more than just time served. It's about leadership, taking ownership, mentoring others, contributing to the big picture. You know, a senior engineer needs a deep understanding of software, architecture, design patterns, best practices. So it's about being a technical expert and having those strong communication and leadership skills we were talking about earlier. Absolutely. And it's interesting because Pedro painted this image of, you know, the ideal 2025 scenario as a senior engineer who can live a year in peace. What do you think he meant by that? To me, it speaks to this desire for stability and security in a field that's known for you know, constant change and upheaval. It's like reaching a level where you've built up enough expertise and a strong enough network that you can kind of weather those storms. It's like building a career moat, right? You're making right. yourself so valuable that layoffs or overseas competition become less of a threat. Exactly. It's about investing in yourself, building a reputation, creating that competitive advantage that's hard to replicate. So if we could distill all of this down to like some actionable advice for programmers, what would be your top tips for future proofing their careers? Well, first and foremost, embrace lifelong learning. The tech industry moves so fast, you know, so be prepared to constantly adapt and pick up new skills. Don't get too attached to one language or framework. Always be looking ahead at what's emerging. So don't get comfortable. Always be pushing yourself to learn and grow. What else? Specialize, like we discussed earlier. Find that niche that truly excites you and become a master of it, you know, that will make you stand out in a crowded field. Find your passion. Dive deep. Become that sought-after expert. I like it. What else? Networking. It's not just about collecting contacts. It's about building genuine relationships with the other people in the field. You know, go to conferences, participate in online communities, contribute to open source projects, make yourself visible, and build those connections. It's about being part of the community, sharing knowledge and, you know, building those relationships that could lead to, you know, amazing opportunities down the line. And finally, don't neglect those soft skills, communication, collaboration, problem solving. These are the things that AI can't replicate, at least not yet, and they're what make you a valuable team member and a leader. It's about being more than just a coder. It's about being a human who can you know, connect with others, understand their needs, and work together to solve problems. Right, so to sum it up, Pedro's predictions, you know, they paint a picture of a rapidly changing landscape, but they also offer a roadmap for how to navigate it successfully. 
He's given us a lot to think about, but ultimately it comes down to each individual defining what success looks like for them. What does that year in peace look like? What are their personal goals and aspirations? That's a perfect segue into our final part, where we'll explore those very questions. Welcome back to the final part of our deep dive into the future of programming jobs. And, you know, we've covered a lot of ground, right, from AI's impact to the importance of specialization and networking. But now I want to shift gears a little bit and get a little more personal. You know, Pedro talks about this dream of, you know, achieving a year in peace as a senior engineer. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that might not be everyone's definition of success. Right. So I'm curious, like, what does that phrase even mean to you? That's such a great question to ponder. You know, I think Pedro's vision is definitely, you know, one path. But the beauty of the tech world is that there are so many ways to define success. Yeah. It's not just about climbing the corporate ladder, yeah. right? Maybe peace means finding a company with a fantastic culture, you know, where you feel valued and challenged. Or maybe it's about having the financial freedom to pursue your own passion projects. You know, even yeah. start your own business. Exactly. Or maybe it's about landing a fully remote role so you can travel the world and, you know, achieve that perfect work-life balance. It really is about figuring out what truly matters to you. Yeah. And it's so easy to get caught up in the hype and the pressure. But at the end of the day, it's your career, your life. You get to decide what fulfilling and meaningful work looks like. And that's why self-reflection is so crucial. You know, what kind of impact do you want to make with your skills? What kind of work environment allows you to thrive? What does a fulfilling career look like in five, 10, even 20 years? Yeah. You know, these are the questions that will help you kind of chart your own course. Yeah. And it's like Pedro's predictions give us this, you know, valuable roadmap, this overview of the changing landscape. Mm -hmm. But you're the one holding the steering wheel. Exactly. And remember, the journey itself is just as important as the destination. You know, embrace the challenges, learn from your experiences, and never stop exploring the tech world is vast and ever evolving. Stay curious, stay adaptable, and keep pushing yourself to grow. So as you continue to explore the world of programming, you know, keep asking yourself, what does success look like for you? What steps can you take today to start building the career of your dreams? The future of programming is full of exciting possibilities. And, you know, with the right mindset and a commitment to continuous learning, you can achieve anything you set your mind to. That's it for our deep dive this week. We hope you found this exploration insightful and inspiring. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing, and keep diving deep.